à tous. Hello to everyone. Nous sommes très heureux de vous inviter à suivre ce webinaire very organisé happy to invite you to join this webinar par le Swiss TPH et le Geneva Health Forum. And the Geneva Health Forum. Nous souhaitons, euh, lors de ce webinaire, faire un état des lieux des principaux obstacles We wish to take stock of the des assurances santé dans les pays à faible revenu the provision of health insurance in low and medium income countries. Dans un premier temps, nous ferons le point avec une discussion avec we'll start with des assurances mutuelles. Observation of mutual insurance schemes. Dans un deuxième partie, euh, le public pourra poser des questions. In the second part, the guests will be able to ask questions. Listeners will be able to ask questions. Et nous vous remercions d'être très nombreux euh, dans ce webinaire qui prouve l'intérêt de la question que nous traitons. And we thank you all for being here, which shows the interest of the question that we're debating today. Je voudrais faire deux petites remarques techniques pour pouvoir suivre ce webinaire. Two technical observations to be Le, able to follow the webinar. Les personnes qui veulent poser des questions doivent poser leurs questions dans le chat. De People who wish to ask questions need to ask the question in the chat. Et nous avons deux collègues, Daniela et Ingrid. And we have two colleagues, Daniela and Ingrid. Trois questions parmi les questions qui seront écrites dans le we chat. We'll three questions. Et trois questions en, en français. Three French questions in French and three questions in English. Et euh, le webinaire va être traduit en anglais et en français. The webinar will be translated into French and into English. Pour pouvoir choisir la langue qui vous convient, vous devez faire cliquer votre souris en bas euh, de votre écran, en bas et à droite, sur un petit icône de zoom qui est marqué euh, interprétation ou translation suivant. Inter uh, yes, in order to follow in the language that you would choose, you need to select the little icon at the bottom right of your screen that's marked uh, either interpretation or translation. You click on that, and there you select the language in which you would like to follow the webinar. Et vous pouvez aussi couper le, le uh, si c'est marqué sur votre uh, en dessous de votre langage, si c'est marqué uh, uh, couper l'original, vous pouvez couper l'original et uniquement rester dans le canal anglais yeah. ou français. Right, in that same on that same icon, uh, you can at the bottom select. Uh, cut off the original language, which will allow you then to follow all the debates in the language of your choice. Je vous remercie. Je vous souhaite une bonne discussion. Et maintenant, je passe la parole à Damien, qui est le modérateur de cette session. À Thank toi. you. And I wish you a, a, all a, a successful meeting. And I pass uh, the word now to Damien, who will moderate. Uh, the remainder of this session. Damien. Yes, hello, everyone. Bonjour, pardon, bonjour à tous. Hello, everyone. Et merci beaucoup pour le, de nous avoir rejoints. Merci, Eric, pour l'introduction. Thank you for having joined us, and thank you, Eric, for the introduction. Nous sommes ensemble pour euh, environ deux We're together for approximately two hours. And we have some eminent personalities. We'll be able to. Pour poser des questions, réagir aux interventions préalables des, 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 des panélistes. So we have eminent uh, persons addressing the issues of today, and certainly the conversation will be enriched by the questions that you will be asking. Voilà, comme a dit Eric, nous allons aujourd'hui nous concentrer sur uh, les principaux obstacles à l'assurance. As Eric said, we'll be concentrating today on the principal obstacles to the provision of health insurance in least low and medium income countries. Voilà, et je souhaite déjà la bienvenue donc à nos trois panélistes, Dr. Well, Bruno Galland. 
Joseph Kudzin et Pascal Ndiaye. Yes, well, I welcome our three uh, panelists today, Bruno Galland, Joseph Kudzin et Patrick Pascal Ndiaye. Euh, je voudrais d'abord euh, euh, introduire un peu plus euh, ces personnalités et puis revenir au sujet avant de leur laisser la parole. I'd just Joseph... like to say a few words about each of these uh, individuals uh, before giving them uh, the floor to make their presentations. Joseph Kudin est actuellement directeur par intérim euh, des systèmes de santé, euh, de la, du financement et de la gouvernance des systèmes de santé à l'Organisation mondiale de la santé à Genève. Joseph Kudin est coordinateur pour la financement de la santé à World Health Organization. Donc, il dirige cette, euh, cette entité au siège de l'OMS. Il dirige cette entité à the headquarters de the WHO. Nous avons Dr. Bruno Galland qui euh, a passé 35 ans de sa carrière dans le renforcement des systèmes de santé et principalement la micro-assurance en Afrique. Bruno Galland, qui a 35 ans d'expérience dans les systèmes de santé et en particulier particularly micro-financing en uh, Afrique. Il était directeur du département système de santé et prévoyance sociale au Centre international de développement et de recherche, CIDR. Il était yeah, formellement uh, le directeur du département de santé et de sécurité sociale au Centre international de développement et de recherche. Voilà, merci Bruno pour être avec nous aujourd'hui. Merci Bruno pour être avec nous aujourd'hui. Merci Bruno pour être avec nous aujourd'hui. Merci Bruno pour être avec nous Pascal, Pascal est spécialisé en financement et politique de santé. Pascal est spécialisé en financing et policy, health policy et financing de health policy. Il a été le premier coordinateur de la concertation entre les acteurs du développement des mutuelles de santé en Afrique de l'Ouest et du Centre. Il était le premier coordinateur du Centre de Central Africa uh, Network of uh, Mutual Insurance Schemes. Voilà, il est maintenant conseiller en prévoyance sociale à Louvain Coopération. And he's now Pascal. social protection advisor at Louvain Cooperation. Welcome, Pascal. Donc, un peu de, de mots sur pourquoi nos organisations, nous organisons cette, cette, cette a few table. Words on, on, a few words on the reason for this uh, round table organized today. Donc, Geneva Health Forum a proposé à Swiss TPH d'organiser cette table ronde. Swiss TPH euh, appuie les pays en développement euh, sur le développement d'assurance euh, inclusive, assurance santé inclusive, à travers notamment des projets de renforcement de son système de santé. The Geneva Health Forum is a forum that brings together actors to help find solutions to global health challenges, as you read on the screen. The Swiss TPH is supporting developing countries to develop inclusive social health insurance mechanisms through health systems strengthening projects. C'est pourquoi nous avons répondu à cette invitation en proposant un événement en deux temps. La première, la table ronde aujourd'hui qui se poursuivra en 2022 en principe avec une série d'ateliers pour aller jusqu'à l'événement de mai 2022 au Geneva Forum. So two, two events are, are planned as a, a lead up to uh, the Geneva Health Forum in 2022. This is the first one, a round table uh, discussion to better define the objectives and the content of a workshop that will be held uh, in early 2022. Uh, and the, the idea is also to build a team to help define precisely the process and the content. Voilà. Je ne vais pas peut-être aller trop loin pour introduire maintenant la session. Ici, vous voyez un peu d'information de, de contextuelle uh, pour dire que uh, de plus en plus de pays souhaitent développer une assurance santé pour leur population dans le cadre de stratégies notamment de couverture santé universelle. Et donc, euh, le sujet qui nous amène aujourd'hui à différentes questions devrait pouvoir répondre aux principales euh, freins au développement de cette assurance santé. Merci à tous les participants. Comme je le disais tout à l'heure, euh, vous aurez la parole. Vous allez pouvoir vous exprimer dans le chat, s'il vous plaît, par écrit. 
Nous avons Ingrid et Daniela qui sont là pour traiter vos questions, les, les relever, les organiser. Donc, nous vous demanderons, en posant votre question, d'être précis, clair, d'indiquer euh, soit en français, soit en anglais, avec votre nom, votre fonction, l'institution dans laquelle vous êtes actuellement, éventuellement, et le pays d'où vous venez. De cette manière, Ingrid et Daniela essaieront de sélectionner les questions qui pourront euh, mieux contribuer à cet événement et qui seront adressées aux panélistes. Allô Oui, Marianne Je ne vois pas de monsieur en bas. Peter, le traducteur, oui. Ah, Eric, pouvez-vous contacter Peter Oui, oui, oui. Je, je m'occupe, Peter a un petit problème avec son micro, je m'en occupe. Voilà, J'expliquais je, le processus de questions-réponses, en fait. Peter, vous nous entendez Non. Il... Voulez-vous reprendre la main un instant, Marianne Pour... Oui, en anglais. Just to, to explain uh, the questions and the answer, you will be able to ask questions during the chat. You can, you have to give your name and you have to give the choice and then, and then you will be able to ask the questions. Daniela and Ingrid will be there. They will selection the questions and then the people whose question have been chosen will be able to talk. Peter, are you yes, okay? Yes, I'm back. Thank you. You are back. back. Okay. Yeah, I had a problem with the micro. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, no problem. Voilà. Okay, yes. Parfait. Donc, nous allons euh, commencer avec la première intervention. So we'll begin with the first uh, presentation. Uh, Joe, vous nous entendez? Tout... C'est bon, le micro va être ouvert pour vous. Alors, la première question qu'on a envie de vous poser, en first fait, question euh, that we want to ask, dans votre fonction à l'OMS, c'est de euh, mieux comprendre avec vous euh, quels sont les principaux concepts derrière le financement de la santé et l'accès à des soins de qualité. Et bien sûr, avec le, le lien avec le, notre sujet qui est l'assurance maladie. Right. Thank you, Merci. Joe. And the first uh, question, Joe, is uh, the organization and concepts uh, behind health insurance provisions. Over Great. to you. Great. Thanks a lot. Um, hope everyone can hear me, and it's it's really a privilege to be here and have this opportunity to to share some ideas with everyone. Um, as you. As you may guess, I wanted to, in, in response to this question of the key concepts, uh, which is pretty much my favorite question, um, talk a bit about what we mean both by UHC and by health insurance, and then to lay out the issues a bit and the options. So <clears throat> first of all, the aim here, the objective, right, is we want to ensure or enable Uh, equitable use of services with protection against financial hardship. We tend to kind of frame that in a sense with the, with the expression of moving towards UHC, which means really is, is, a, is, a, is a conception that is based more on making progress rather than achievement or somehow crossing an arbitrary threshold that you now have UHC. Instead, this idea is that all countries want to make progress on reducing the gap between the need for services and the use of services to improve financial protection and to improve quality. So that's kind of the framing of, of what we're trying to achieve. 
And the other part of it, though, is to think through how to design in particular aspects of universality from the beginning, knowing that, especially in resource constrained settings, you can't have everything for everyone. Actually, you can't have that anywhere. But there may be certain services um, that you want to have for everyone, for example, for HIV or TB um, or for COVID vaccination now, um, or to have certain things like um, even if we have multiple schemes or incomplete coverage, we want to have one information system for all uh, patients, for example. So doing all of this in a context of high informality where we have the critical problem of constrained uh, fiscal capacity. So in thinking through this idea of what is health insurance, I would say that in, in older times and former times, we used to think of this of health financing in terms of models like an NHS or a social health insurance or CBHI. But I believe, and hopefully there's more consensus now to really think in terms of functions and policies that whatever we call systems, they have to perform these functions of collecting money, of pooling it, allocating that money to the providers and defining policies on the, on the entitlements and obligations of the population. So the benefits and co-payments or user fees. Now behind that is kind of a conceptual question, which is, you know, it's kind of saying, or a rhetorical question really, which is we don't actually believe that German citizens are more insured than British citizens just because they run their system through things they call insurance schemes, right? So what we want to do in this conceptual work, really, and, and we'll talk about the practicalities, I think, in the session, but we need to understand systems and options in terms of functions rather than labels or models. And I have been trying for many years to keep Bismarck and Beveridge in their graves. They sometimes reemerge, but uh, I'm trying again. So the critical thing, I think, for our session today is actually getting the question right. And if the question, if we get the question wrong, which is, as I say here, how do we simply, you know, how do we target the poor for subsidies and get everyone else to contribute? Then basically we have one option. And it's an option that hasn't worked out well in most cases. If, however, we get the question right, in my view, which is how can we reduce the barriers to effective service use and improve financial protection for the poor and for other persons in the informal sector, then that opens the door to many choices and options in health financing. And later we'll talk a little bit about service delivery as well. The way I try to frame these options and how we've portrayed them is really on what we call differentiating by the basis for entitlement and whether entitlement is contributory based as is with traditional health insurance or non-contributory based. And non-contributory doesn't mean that people aren't contributing in a sense, they're often paying taxes indirectly and so on, but their entitlement does not derive from that contribution. Whether you, you know, whether or not you choose to call it insurance, I would argue is a kind of a local political decision rather than a conceptual one. Um, because of course, with this conception, we certainly want all people to be insured. But we have a problem of traditional contributory insurance, which is why I raise it this way. Many problems around informality and the difficulty of collecting but one is this, and this is some evidence that was presented a few years uh, ago to us from Latin American countries, which shows that formal or informal status is not a one-time fixed lifetime condition, that within any year, you see a change of people moving from one to the other, back and forth. And that means that where that entitlement, where that movement into formality is linked to health coverage, then people are constantly obtaining, changing, and losing their coverage, which is really not consistent with the idea of UHC, of coverage as a right rather than an employee benefit. It's also very expensive to track this. There's evidence uh, from Mexico, for example, of how this um, uh, has pro creates problems for continuity of care. So a whole range of things. And it really raises a lot of concerns about what might be seen as traditional approaches to contributory based entitlement. 
we have, and I'm not going to go through this in detail in the interest of time, but we have in our work identified four broad categories or within these two broad categories, four sets of options or, or areas, uh, approaches to dealing with this. Um, for the non-contributory on the left, I would just focus on the bottom two, right? Which, is which are probably more relevant to the uh, lower income countries in particular, um, which is to expand coverage, for example, through um, free care initiatives linked to exemptions and changes in public financial management mechanisms. And uh, Helene Barrois from my team is gonna be coming out with a paper soon on that with some very interesting experiences from several Francophone African countries. There could be targeted insurance coverage, which is non-contributory as we see in India, or a universal guarantee of specific services. And we see that in Burundi with free MCH in health centers. We see it in some higher income countries as well. Now on the contributory side, really the first option, which is just hoping that people enroll has never worked anywhere. Okay, it is really about, you know, that you need, even on the contributory side, you need strong budgetary engagement. And so the more relevant option is number two there, which is um, to still have heavily subsidized engagement, but we have the two experience of, of Rwanda and China where there has been important progress on this. It is really the type we see in higher income countries as well to get to universality under this arrangement, but it takes a very strong government um, and capacity and as well to organize local officials to make that happen. So in to conclude my comments now, we know that the context of low and middle income countries poses severe fiscal challenges, which in turn really limits how far you can go with public spending on health, how fast you can progress and, and make progress. But all of that reality should not constrain what we actually know about health financing and the weakness of contributory-based approaches. So with that, let me turn it back to Damien. Hello? Damien, je ne t'entends pas. Damien, je ne t'entends pas. He says that he doesn't hear you. I don't hear you, Damien. Damien, now it's okay. Merci, Eric. Voilà, maintenant je t'entends. Okay. Voilà, Peter, mon micro est donc ouvert. Merci, Joe, pour cette, cette explication. Thank you, Joe, for le this presentation. Délai, le délai tenu. And for et keeping to the time. Très intéressant de, de pouvoir écouter uh, ces différents concepts. D'abord, je retiens qu'il faut se poser les bonnes concepts. questions. I understand that we need to ask the right Dans questions. Et l'objectif d'améliorer la protection en santé des personnes dans les pays à faible revenu. Vous avez évoqué différents types de protection. Types of protection, contributive systems. Et nous sommes évidemment très intéressés par ce rapport qui devrait sortir et And que vous avez évoqué sur la couverture des looking personnes. Looking forward to seeing the paper that's coming out soon on coverage. Voilà. J'aimerais maintenant laisser la parole à Pascal. I'd like to pass the floor to Pascal. Avant de poser la question de passer la parole à Pascal, je rappelle que les questions Before sont ouvertes. Before giving the word to Pascal, I remind you that the questions are open. Posez vos questions dans le chat you en français. Ask questions in the chat in en French anglais, or in English. Merci. Merci d'indiquer vos noms, euh, fonctions, Thanks institutions. Indicating your name, function and institutions as you do so. Pays. And the country. Alors Pascal, tu nous entends? Tu es là? Pascal, do you hear us? We don't hear Pascal. Nous remercions It's Pascal qui est cut. actuellement en déplacement. Et... We thank Pascal who's currently traveling. Il a aménagé son, son agenda pour nous rejoindre. He has adjusted his agenda to be able to be with us. Eric, si vous voyez Pascal, voilà, vous pouvez nous aider. 
there. Oui, il a résolu le problème. Je, pour, je ne pouvais pas activer mon micro. Merci, Eric. My micro is on. Et merci, Damien, pour cette introduction. Thank oui, you, je... Eric, and thank you, Damien, for this introduction. Voilà, Pascal, nous voudrions te, te poser la question suivante. Pascal, we'd like to put the following question to you. Du fait de ton expérience dans, euh, en, auprès de, de systèmes d'assurance, nous voudrions te demander comment ces systèmes d'assurance s'organisent et justement pour faire face à tous ces, ces défis qui sont, qui sont là et comment ils s'organisent précisément en ce qui concerne la, leur gouvernance, leur gestion et la recherche de satisfaction de leurs assurés. Yeah, we thank you, uh, Pascal. Uh, welcome, and we, uh, based on your vast experience, we'd like to hear from you about how insurance schemes organize themselves and what are the principal challenges of governance and management of health insurance schemes so as to satisfy the needs of the end users. À toi, Pascal. Over to you. Ça va, vous m'entendez? Do you hear me? Uh, apparemment, oui. Yes. Uh, donc, uh, je reprends cette, uh, ces remerciements pour l'introduction et pour l'invitation. Thank you for the intro uh, and the invitation. Effectivement, je suis sur le terrain. Désolé si les conditions ne sont pas optimales. I'm now in the field. Mais je, apologies if conditions are not optimal. Je suis content d'être ici et de repartager le plateau avec... Uh, avec Joe et Bruno. I'm Joe happy to be here and to share the platform with Joe uh, and Bruno. Tout à fait au début de COVID-19, en regardant quel était l'impact de cette pandémie. Last time uh, we were together le, was at the beginning of COVID. Sur les mouvements sur, sur le pandémie uh, des assurances et on uh, health insurance des groupes uh, solidaires. Schemes and uh, très bien de mutual groups. Sur l'impact possible et c'était uh, très apprécié. Merci. That was uh, an interesting Alors, moi, je voudrais, um, pour répondre à ta question, uh, Damien, to on peut question, regarder Damien. quelle est la complexité de tout ceci. Je ne vais pas voler we, we will look briefly at the complexity of health insurance. Mais, um, L'idée pour moi ici, c'est de voir est-ce que on, on se pose encore toutes les bonnes questions comme la idée ici est de voir si nous nous posons les bonnes questions pour avancer correctement. L'idée pour moi ici, c'est de partager quelques expériences de terrain, I'd like to share a few experiences from the field. éléments que l'on retrouve sur le terrain et que si on ne fait pas attention. That, Dans une démarche uh, de couverture, we need to be careful about on peut répliquer très dangereusement and the errors uh, that we can uh, replicate if we're not careful as we seek to implement Alors, universal health I will try and be quick and stick to the time frame. Some key aspects linked to healthcare offer. And around the governance Alors, in particular. Um, on a déjà fait une première, uh, de sur, uh, there are sur several angles under which one can approach uh, health insurance. To just et je crois que ça fait partie des questions clés. À quoi on veut utiliser l'assurance maladie? What do we want to use health insurance for? That's the key question. question. Ou est-ce que c'est pour... Is it to finance uh, a health care system? Mécanisme de gestion du risque. Et donc, Or est is que it as a mechanism for managing the risk? Ou on cherche risk? à protéger. Et déjà, en se posant cette première question, on voit qu'on peut entrer dans une tension... Uh, sur l'utilisation de ce mécanisme que l'assurance maladie. This question already puts us in front of attention des, between these two um, des conséquences approaches. Pour les résultats. Alors, il est très difficile de catégoriser. Vraiment très difficile. To categorize. On peut avoir plusieurs lunettes et changer autant qu'on veut. On peut regarder l'aspect public-privé. 
we on can peut regarder qui est le propriétaire public on pilot, public private scheme so you can see who's the owner is it the state ou est-ce que ce sont les communautés private enterprise comme, uh, or is it social or community based forms of mutual schemes alors uh, selon l'angle de vue on peut avoir plusieurs déterminants et plusieurs uh, aspects According to our point of view, we can have different angles to analyze health insurance systems. I'd like to look at some determining factors with you. En faisant un focus, parce que évidemment, ce sera difficile de tout brasser, toutes les formes d'assurance maladie. It's difficult to cover all possible forms of health insurance. Parler de l'assurance maladie, on va faire un focus. C'est quelque peu dangereux parce qu'on ne va pas voir toute la complexité qu'il y a derrière. Mais là, je voudrais I would like prendre to euh, le modèle communautaire de type take social. Qui est à but non lucratif, qui est plutôt dans, un, dans une dynamique euh, sociale, qui cherche a, à protéger, mais aussi à ne pas faire de, de, de bénéfices derrière and not to generate a profit as other Et forms of insurance do. There are numerous determinants. Is it, is it a voluntary or obligatory scheme? Is it a model or contributory model or not? Assistance, social, mais pourquoi je veux le faire Pas seulement pour ceux qui sont euh, ici et qui, qui connaissent un peu mon background, que je, je ne sais faire que ça, désolé. Have Mais euh, aussi, aussi j'estime que si on veut passer à l'universalité, il faut regarder ces expériences existantes. Si on veut atteindre la santé universelle, nous devons analyser ces schémas. Est-ce qu'on les a vraiment bien schemes. analysés and to understand if we have properly analyzed them, look at the weaknesses and strengths. The mutual schemes, the weak level of penetration. Weak coverage or small scale coverage, small impact on the improvement of quality of health care. Mais est-ce que toutes les questions qui sont derrière ont été bien posées? Parce que je pense qu'il y a toute une cascade. Financial viability is small. We're not last in Europe. Encore d'explorer. Alors, small legitimacy. Je prends. Je vais accélérer un peu. I'm going to accélérer. Damien demandait comment ces mutuelles sont organisées. How are these mutuals, ça part de la base, de l'unité familiale. C'est ça qui est they, intéressant à regarder. Their base is the family Donc, unit. Que le dispositif que, qui est mis en place a un certain degré de proximité par rapport à l'assuré. So the, the schemes put in place are bon, évidemment, il y a un défi close de to the user. De there are challenges Mais in terms of structuring and in terms of evolution and duration. Il met, il manipule les différentes fonctions du financement de la santé, la mobilisation des ressources, la mise en commun et l'achat des services. Uh, et comme disait, different functions of financing, mobilization uh, of resources, uh, 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 acquisition of services. Alors, en termes de mobilisation des ressources, premier élément. In terms of mobilization of resources, the first remark I would make is. L'idée, c'est de savoir d'où vient le financement. Where does the finance Qui come from? Qui finance quoi? Who finances what? Est-ce que la prime est financée par l'assuré? Is the care est financed by the uh, user, seul? by the insurance person? Tout le dispositif peut être prise en charge par l'assuré. And is the entire uh, scheme, voit, health uh, scheme uh, partout, covered by the user? No, in most cases, les no. Populations, ça c'est l'image qui est à côté. As you can see on the right. Sont dans un modèle de financement uh, uh, plus ou moins à l'aise. 
high ça revenue veut dire que countries. Il y a un financement paritaire, un, un co-financement du dispositif. Uh, fully de, financed schemes. Uh, le fonctionnaire finance avec son employé, qui est l'État ou l'entreprise privée. Whether it's Mais quand on s'intéresse au, au the milieu employer, du, du graphique, middle là, incomes, on ne voit income, personne en fait, income, qui intervient dans le insurance is Et pour les voluntary. populations indigentes, and en termes de mobilisation des ressources, on sait que euh, c'est plus la coopération internationale ou bilatérale Right. It's, it's, uh, it's external funding that comes in and provides the scheme. So when you're talking about mobilization resources, you have to distinguish between the types of population. Most states, most states are focusing either on people who have the resources themselves to cover or the poor. The, the, the gap is with population with modest income and vulnerable groups. And so this, this, this category of population uh, it requires uh, specific models. And mutual insurance screens are Mutual insurance schemes are not able to, to provide funding properly, so this jeopardizes the durability of the schemes. Very quickly, if we talk about pooling of resources, Cool financial resources, but also risks. What is the basis upon which risk sharing is made? And where is the effort uh, made? In a context where 80 or 90% of the population are of very low income, how can you generate sufficient financial resources to pay for the system? Mutual insurance schemes are tending to abandon the family village level to integrate schemes that are based on much broader uh, uh, level of engagement. So leaving the micro insurance to move to larger schemes. Purchasing of services. We want to purchase services, but what are we buying and with what are we buying the services? Countries have a hard time defining the service packages. There's an element that I would like to insist on here, which is very important and not worked out in most countries. Governance is, is, 
weak and in terms of regulation, we are uh, deficient. In terms of separation of functions, we're also deficient. Resources mobilized are, are, are small because of the weakness of uh, the economic power of the populations. The packages offered, therefore, are small, and satisfaction of healthcare users is small. And so, the, whatever the insurance scheme at that level is difficult to make it adequate with uh, care packages. When we try to multiply or amalgamate microfinancing schemes, we have to be careful. The service provider and the interaction with service providers and contractualization is extremely complex. And we're not, and they're not ready yet, and the system is not ready yet uh, for a third party uh, payer. And payment methods and, uh, are diverse and often incur delays that are important. I wanted here just to illustrate, I didn't want to put up some figures, but I need to here. I'd like to highlight two points. The first is the health package. What is in the package? We have systems where care is free or subsidized. First example, on the right, where the mutual health insurance uh, scheme says we will take such and such a, a health situation problem. What do we note here? Then we accelerate. I'm almost done. In the context where care is free or subsidized, we need to look at the efficiency. Because we can weaken the financial viability of healthcare systems here we see that right that, that it's not actually free final element how to finance the operation of a health system and health insurance system. Models with private sector. They take the technical mediation costs within the risk premiums. Those are some elements I wanted to share with you. And in terms of satisfaction of the users, the critics' criticisms are mostly with the quality of care. We have conducted a study, multi-country study, which showed us that the notion of healthcare quality, quality of care 
that uh, mutual insurance schemes have very little leeway to affect, to impact on the quality of, of health care. I would like to stop there and thank you for having listened and apologies for having been too long. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Pascal. You're passionate and it's, uh, passion it's uh, interesting to listen to you. Thank you very much. You know, health mutual schemes extremely well. And you, you make a, an important point, which is that the wealthy uh, populations are the ones who benefit the most from healthcare schemes. And you, you, you mentioned that uh, free or uh, fully subsidized systems are not efficient and therefore don't fully play their role in Notamment. providing health care to the poorest. Et puis, qu'il qu pénalise les, les mutuelles de santé qui n'avaient probablement pas prévu ces coûts. Yeah, they, this penalizes uh, mutual systems, uh, mutual uh, schemes, as they haven't uh, been able to fully plan for the full scale of costs. Alors, je pense, Pascal, que tu as suscité des questions dans le chat qui arrivent de plus en I plus. Je rappelle... Pascal, there are lots of questions in the chat. Je rappelle que les questions sont ouvertes. Euh, Posez-les. Daniela et Ingrid les relèvent. All people that uh, questions are open in the chat and Ingrid and Daniela are, are looking at them. Voilà. Et j'appelle Bruno au micro. And now Bruno I, Galland. I call Bruno Galland. Je vais faire très court pour tout simplement demander à Bruno de partager avec nous son expérience. Very briefly. And I, I thank uh, Bruno Galland for sharing uh, with us uh, the fruit of his experience uh, regarding the main obstacles to inclusive health care insurance coverage in Africa. Over to you, Bruno. Allô? Tu nous entends? Yes. Bonjour à tous. Hello, everyone. Bonjour à tous, ceux que je connais et ceux que je ne connais pas, parmi les Hello, participants. Hello, everyone, those I know and those I don't know amongst the participants. Dans un premier temps, euh, en fait, l'objet de mon intervention sera de poser quelques éléments d'explication du pourquoi, du pourquoi on a été si dur Mais je ne me concentrerai pas sur les mutuelles, pensant qu'on a jeté le bébé dans l'eau du bain du service de santé. We threw the baby out with the bathwater when discussing Et ces bébés mutuels se sont noyés. systems and uh, the mutual insurance scheme babies enfin, cas, have, ont eu de la drowned or have had difficulty swimming. Mais on pas fait des bébés. But we haven't done the autopsy of the baby. Et on pas analysé suffisamment du bain. And we haven't sufficiently analyzed the water in the bath. Que je faire maintenant. That's what I would like to do suivant. now. Next Donc, je parlerai slide. dans un premier temps de la question de l'assurabilité la, de la, la, des services de santé. The, the possibilities of ensuring healthcare systems. Voilà, dans un premier temps, c'est ce que je vais faire. Et pour le faire, voilà, je vous ai mis quelques pays parce que les contextes peuvent être différents. Ce que je vais dire which uh, est le fruit de l'expérience, d'une partie de l'expérience, mon expérience dans différents pays different qui ont tous pour caractéristiques, à, à l'exception du Cambodge, Madagascar et du Comor, d'être en Afrique, ou en tous les cas dans la sensibilité Comora, africaine. Uh, pardon Bruno, 
Excusez-moi oui. de vous déranger, c'est Eric. Il semble qu'il y a un problème technique, on ne vous entend pas en français. Est-ce que vous pouvez vérifier que vous êtes bien sur le canal non. français, s'il vous plaît Non, question. vous avez raison. Ok, vous pouvez continuer alors. I will speak, therefore, from mainly my experience in, in, in Africa, as indicated on, these, uh, on this slide, uh, Tanzania, Kenya, Benin, Chad. Amongst the questions faced by health insurance systems, that is to say the water in the bath, the first is the offer of quality health care. There's a real problem of the attractivity the, of the offer, lack of infrastructure, lack of qualified persons, especially in rural areas. Um, parallel practices, which are an obstacle to insurance payments under the table, lack of medicines, lack of materials, and as a result of which the use, the, the use of healthcare systems are, is, are, are, is small, the level of use is, is small. Only a part of the target population actually uses healthcare systems. And those who are excluded are not only excluded for financial reasons at, uh, and, and for pay reasons of payment at access points. It's not only for financial reasons. There are many other determinants that require uh, uh, recognition and action. This is one of the weaknesses of contributive uh, health insurance systems, therefore mutual. But it's also, It's also a, a time bomb for health uh, insurance systems uh, with obligatory um, uh, adhesion and obligatory joining. The second uh, question difficulty is the uh, possibility of ensuring uh, the technical services Those who have worked in the countries I've mentioned know that um, therapeutic protocols are not always respected. The, the, the costing uh, policies are not always applied, which can be a consequence of the first point or not. Capacity to forecast and, and manage forecasting systems and managing ca capacities are weak. In particular though, is the question that uh, the model, the economic model by which these costs are met through uh, medical pre prescription pre results in an over prescription. The economic model I'd like to emphasize under, under, under payment of uh, the, the low salaries of state person, health personnel which results also that there's a lack of uh, pers qualified personnel in rural areas. And the cost recovery for health personnel is financed for personnel that's not state personnel is financed by the sale of medicines and it can exceed 60 to 80% of, uh, of the costs. Uh, so the economic model incites, it favors over prescription of medicines. 
this means that the the cost uh, the the payment of the cost is a charge for the patient or the health insurance mutual health insurance and when you need to prescribe to survive it's difficult to respect rational therapeutic protocols and it it encourages uh, irrational or non unneeded uh, requests for medicaments uh, uh, with by the patients and therefore a lack of efficiency. The major problem is the underfinancing of health systems. Even if the inefficiency uh, and inefficiencies in the management of monopolized resources is real, in addition, in addition, I would uh, re-emphasize what Pascal mentioned, which is the financial instability of. Uh, health systems uh, under, under uh, free provision of services, Niger being one uh, case in point. And in underfinanced systems, governance and accountability of health systems, of course, uh, is all the more difficult. And that's why in terms of cost effectiveness, uh, the efficiency is uh, quite low. And finally, also the question of the systems, centralized systems for provision of medicines. I have never come across a centralized system that manages to uh, that manages to uh, efficiently provide uh, uh, medicines. Why is free provision a problem? Because it's announced, but it's only partially financed and it doesn't cover all the costs. It's usually limited to uh, provision of medicines and consumables. Pascal gave some examples of disequilibrium, financial disequilibrium that this provides causes. And the, the partial efficiency of free systems. And because uh, the, the free systems are announced, they are out of the scope, therefore, of mutual health insurance systems. So there's a, there's a real need for uh, additional financing. Uh, research action uh, schemes have rarely led to a lowering of uh, the, the, the costing. And it poses real problems of durability because when, when the financing is over, uh, that's it. And they're not articulated with uh, growing and uh, emerging health insurance systems. I understand what Joe is saying about the risk Either you have financing systems that will eliminate risk for the user, in which case we're not talking about insurance actually. Otherwise there is a risk and we will reduce it by putting ourselves on the demand side. The problem is that health insurance, the role of health insurance is not to purchase healthcare or rather it's to provide healthcare where the quality and the cost, where the quality and the cost is predictable. So it's a purchaser of care, not a provider of care. 
in, in the countries mentioned, those conditions are not uh, uh, filled. Which means that costly and heavy uh, accompany, accompanying measures are required. That's the, the bath water. And, and, and the, that these, uh, this accompaniment this, uh, will not be uh, effective or possible without substantial investments uh, in uh, provision of and, and this additional resources must be generated by other elements than an increasing input by the insurees. Looking at it, it's just from the the uh, question of the of the access to to care by uh, the you the end care users. Everybody knows that the provision of health care has a cost, and they're not there's not too many ways of covering the costs. Yeah, either we. Either in kind uh, provision, personnel, health care, uh, consumables, or others. The state can make budgetary allocations, finance sectoral vertical programs, and for FBR uh, resources. Uh, Anything not based, uh, anything not covered by the precedingly mentioned uh, elements need to be covered by the end users. In the middle, there's a bar, tarification, the cost allocation, which generation of the financial risk covered by the health insurance is at the upper part, in the middle. In the middle. Everything that's not financed above by the sources I mentioned needs to be financed below by direct payments. And we know the ravages that this can do for the insurances or vouchers. If all a part of the costs are, if all a part of the costs are not uh, costed or free for the user, then there are no financial risks. The risk is to not be able to be to not have access to care because of lack of money, lack of resources, financial resources. There are other, there are other elements uh, that uh, determine access to health care, distance, permanence, availability of personnel. All, all the potential users, therefore, of health systems uh, don't use and don't have access to health systems. That's why in order to be universal, health insurance uh, needs to be universal and obligatory. There are two major risks of insurance, health insurance. To reduce the financial risk uh, of the um, official uh, costing system, which leaves uh, a good part to the user to pay, but also to abolish parallel practices. It's the hidden face of governance. 
health insurance it provides transparency and accountability for the healthcare personnel. They're in a polluted bath, as it were. And so it's normal that cooperation is difficult. If the health introduction of insurance scheme schemes does not result in additional resources for the healthcare personnel, not only for the, uh, for the structures, but for the personnel themselves. We're in a bit of an impasse macroeconomically. I won't go back to the history of why systems are the way they are. Uh, Formal sector spend uh, more or less 5% of uh, their income on health care, except for exceptional expenses. And they allocate 2% of their revenues in rural areas and 1.5% in, in urban areas. Look at this curve in red, uh, a study in Madagascar, 600 uh, informal families. 1.5% of their declared revenue. You see the distribution in blue. their capacity, their declared capacity to contribute, what they are declare themselves as ready to contribute. I don't know if correlation has meaning, but you can see that they're relatively close. And those who have a, the lowest incomes have a tendency to declare a little more than others. Proceeding example. Accra has uh, requested states to invest 50% of their fiscal resources with a, with a ratio of taxes of revenues of 18%. I've mixed things up here, but uh, you can criticize it after. But if you put these two together, this gives 2.7% of uh, GDP or of revenue. So we need additional resources. That's what this demonstrates. So governance and health insurance three levels of governance. The governance of resources, I've already mentioned these. Innovative financing. This is because ta traditional taxes are not enough. So we need to generate additional resources in addition to the state budgets and international assistance. And we probably need to look at this. The second point is putting these funds uh, together. You can raise funds, but after you need to make sure that they get allocated towards the healthcare system. And thirdly, you need to purchase care. So innovative public financing. For those who have been able to generate additional resources. The problem is to put them into fluid and safe financial circuits, because there's a tendency for states to, to put them into the public treasure and to, to see them as a general income rather than specifically allocated. How to decouple additional taxes for financing of healthcare and that they're not just generally uh, additional uh, resources to uh, fill the state budget.
for the for the own resources of the state budget. These resources are often unpredictable and uh, changeable. They can change quite rapidly from one element to and from one moment to another. And, and international help, help also uh, suffers from the problem of being integrated into the state budget. When there's uh, the, 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 the contributions of the insured are the only really resources available. And it's these, it's this financing that justifies and gives legitimacy to mixed, uh, mixed uh, governance of health systems. Sometimes they are assimilated to public resources, as in the case uh, in Tanzania. It's also true that they won't represent more than 30 to 40% of the total financing of uh, the costs. 50% is in Mali. And Mauritania is aiming for a 70% uh, objective. Key question is how to conciliate the massive financial input necessary of public funds and avoiding uh, public governance and uh, administrative administrated, uh, management. We underestimate the obstacles uh, to mobilizing and, and, and putting in a common pool uh, resources raised for uh, health insurance schemes. very difficult to uh, ensure yes it's very difficult to um, uh, ensure that uh, financing is available up front uh, one of the advantages of uh, uh, health insurance systems is that the uh, contribution contributions are made in advance We're not supposed to go too far with proposals, but we have some ideas. Dedicated funds is one, but they're very difficult to put in place. Most of the time we associate, we associate mobilization of funds with the purchase of care. The purchase of care is one of the essential components of health insurance systems. Structures will purchase negotiated packages for a dedicated uh, public, for a dedicated segment of the population. So we need, they pay the uh, service providers, uh, they, we need audits, we need uh, close uh, analysis and reporting. That means not to be uh, to, um, mixed with verification and control of PBF. This, uh, this presupposes that there's a contract with the third party payer between the two entities having each, each with their own uh, individual legal status. Which, which raises the question of governance. In poor countries, health insurance is, uh, is required to raise uh, large uh, amounts of funds in respect of uh, the uh, taxation levels that are seen. We need an increase. 
this perspective of this perspective of income uh, raises uh, or uh, brings up uh, competition between uh, different ministries for access to those resources. If we, at the same time, if we, if we manage these uh, schemes through uh, already deficient uh, management systems, state management systems, this will not lead to uh, increased efficiency. Because it, it leads to a collusion between the state, which is a service provider, care service provider, and the organization that's paying for the costs. There are alternatives. There are alternatives to create mixed governance systems that are strong and accountable. But in the final analysis, this is a political question. which is to right which is the the willingness of the state to delegate one of these functions to mixed uh mixed structures of which where and wherein uh mutual insurance schemes can be one of the options there thank you very much for listening Thank you, Bruno, for this excellent presentation. We're a little bit uh, over the time, but I, I know a couple of things. Problems of quality, management and governance, and particularly a question of the economic model to finance health systems. You explained how personnel is, is paid from the sale of med medicines, which leads to parallel practices. You underline the, the main problem, which is the underfinancing of healthcare systems. And the problem of the bath water, <laughs> polluted bath water, which is which generates uh, parallel practices. Thank you for for this, which allows us to understand more properly. The objectives of 15%, and today we're at, uh, uh, or should be at 18. There'll be difficulties to achieve this. You mentioned Chad and, and Cameroon. I would like to pass the word to Daniela and Ingrid. What is the temperature in the chat room and how are the questions coming? And we give the word to Daniela and Indri. It uh, takes a little time since we're not in the same room. Uh, several questions in French and in English. Shall we start directly with the questions? Yeah. Yes, let's go directly. We have 45 minutes left. Will we, you've chosen some questions. Yes. 
the uh, questions that are here and uh, the panelists can react. Um, the first question is in French. We'll give the word to Mr. Criel from the Institute of Tropical Medicine in Gant. He will, he will activate your micro. You have a maximum five minutes to put your question. Thank you very much. You take me by surprise. I have made more a comment than a question. I appreciated very much the image of used by Bruno Galland, the, the bathwater, in which uh, the mutual insurance dans lequel on opère, have been le contexte drawn. dans lequel beaucoup de mutuelles de santé ont été uh, clear, se, sont, that, se développent uh, et, the, et, the, et, the, et néfaste hein, et, et, et toxique uh, et, are, are et, uh, et hostile à un développement harmonieux de mutuelles de santé. Et donc, il faut, to, uh, faut aborder les, ces éléments du contexte de façon, de façon sérieuse. Ce n'est pas simple, uh, certainement pas. Uh, mais donc, je me, je me pose la question, c'est une wonder, question que je me pose depuis des années, est-ce que les mutuelles de santé ont-elles toujours reçu l'essence qu'elles auraient mérité Have mutual insurance schemes been given the opportunities that they shouldn't have been given alors, je vous donne un exemple qui vient de ma propre pratique. <coughs> J'ai travaillé dans un district au Congo, fin des I années 80, in, in in, uh, donc il y a bien longtemps, c'est la zone de santé de Bomanda au nord-est du Congo. In the northeast, eh bien, en l'espace de trois ans, in the space of three years, 100 000 personnes sur les 150 000 se sont inscrites à la mutuelle de santé. Out of 150,000 signed up to the Mais, mutual insurance scheme, but in a context where quality health care, where it was offered and where governance was okay, where where the package of healthcare uh, was uh, sensitive to the needs of uh, the population. The time was given. And where carefully for the poorest uh, households, there were subsidies were available. So this illustrates that even a voluntary uh, health insurance scheme can work if the context is favorable. Et je me demande, à contrario, uh, quelle est l'éthique d'imposer de, de, des taxes à des gens and pour financer un système genre National Health Service, alors que la qualité est médiocre, que les gens ne sont pas motivés, le personnel, etc., etc. When, uh, the Donc, uh, quelle est la faisabilité des alternatives dans beaucoup de contextes africains Voilà. Thank you. Je un peu, je sais, mais c'est peut-être pas mal pour les débats. Voilà. Merci. That's my contribution. Merci beaucoup, M. Criel, pour cette réaction et ce... Je pense qu'il faut. La question était est-ce que, est que Joe Cuisine, tu voudrais réagir, Joe euh, Ou bien les autres panélistes On a vu que la question n'est pas forcément adressée à l'un ou l'autre, a priori. C'était une réaction. Je pense que c'est bien, ça lance un débat. Merci pour cet exemple du CDI Boamanda. Yes, thanks. This is uh, Joe, and, and thanks to Bart for this. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, Bart, but I took this home from my office. Yesterday, which I think was your PhD thesis, if I'm not mistaken, from those years ago. Uh, so very good, good timing on this. Look, I think there's a few things there because I was also uh, uh, long ago. I you know I really think, and I do think that the Bormanda scheme that you mentioned exhibits a lot of very and exhibited a lot of very positive characteristics. I think the distinction here and where we need to find a way, a common path, if we will is certainly from where I'm sitting and where I've been sitting the past 25 years or more is that our focus is on public policy. And arguably something like Bomanda, you know, existed because of the absence of public policy. So it was to some extent an alternative that was developed 
uh, at, a con at a time when the government in the country was not really interested in that. So in terms of, I guess, my perspective and view on this, then there's real limitations of what's the, the scope for public policy in that setting. On the other hand, that scheme offered a lot of good examples about how to organize care um, and link um, you know, district hospital care to health centers and, and so on. And, and the way, and it also offered uh, some lessons about uh, arguably that it was easier to cover hospital care than for example, um, outpatient services or medicines just because of the sheer volume of things. I think what we need to look for um, where such schemes are, are, are in place and where government hopefully becomes interested, more interested in the sector is how to, how to bring the different elements uh, that exist into some common frame. It doesn't necessarily mean one pool, but it can mean other things. So one example I think that Bruno talked about was the uh, community health fund in uh, Tanzania. And one thing I know that of the developments on the public sector side there has to do with the development of what's called the direct facility financing uh, mechanism that is used to directly send um, money from the center to health facilities, government health facilities that have the autonomy to directly receive, manage and account for those funds. But critically also at those, the systems that have been put in place at provider level use one accounting system, one reporting system for all sources of funds. So the CHF, the community health funds are captured, the expenditures from that are captured, the expenditures from the budget, the expenditures from other sources are reflected in one system rather than what used to be the practice of every scheme and every flow of funds having its own separate accounting system, which meant making things more efficient was, was very difficult. So I think we need to, in any country, you have to, the starting place is kind of working with what exists. And if, you know, as we are usually trying to do, inform public policy, then we need to see how to bring these things together. And the, you know, the accounting systems, the information systems are critical things. For longer term, it's the issue of bringing more public finance in. And again, the last thing I would say here is we're seeing now an emerging and growing number of experiences of linking a limited benefit package to, uh, to have that free of charge linked to a payment method. And in my view, I'm happy to call that health insurance, right? There's a pool of funds, there's a purchaser, there's a benefit package and so forth. So this idea that we can expand through that mechanism and also extend the systems again for information and accounting to include other funding sources, I think offers a, a way forward, even if it's not as fast as some would like it. Thanks. And over, sorry. Okay, this is Ingrid now speaking. Um, we now have another question from uh, an English participant, anchor Peggy Holtroff, who holds the position as a steering committee member of the Patient and Citizen Involvement Group at the Health Technology Assessment International here in Switzerland. Uh, anchor Peggy, I would like you to perhaps share your question to the group. And the question will be directed towards Pascal, please. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> okay, where I'm coming from is basically I'm, I'm leading a project or co-leading a project where it's about patient and citizen involvement in low and middle income countries in health care in health technology assessment if existing or health care decision making. And, and when talking about building up um, health insurance systems in, in low and middle income countries, it's basically I mean, we're coming for a situation where people pay out of their pocket if they can for the services they get. Now, when building up these services, or oh, the insurance systems, I'm wondering whether it makes sense to, in the creation of these systems, to involve the people, the users, the consumers, 
um, to actually meet the needs as they are in their specific environments. Does that make sense? Merci, Anc Peguet, pour, pour votre question. Je, je proposerais à Ingrid okay, aussi d'ajouter une autre question, si on peut, pour, comme ça, pour que les, les panélistes puissent répondre plus, rapi plus rapidement à plus de questions. So uh, Merci, Anc. Je pense que la question est maintenant pour Joe. From Didier, who is the HIFA country representative coordinator for the Afro region, healthcare information for all. I'm not sure which country you're in, Didier. Perhaps you can let us know when you start presenting your question to us. So, one, the first question was to Pascal, and the second question is to Joe. Didier, okay, would you, you be able to come on the microphone, please? Yes, thank you very much. Um... I'm Didier Demasoso from Cameroon. Okay, my my question is with respect to the prioritization of mental health. I'm not in, hearing uh, anything. Hello. Hello. Damien. Oh, here he is. Thanks, Didier. Hello. Okay, thank you very much. I'm called Didier and I'm calling from Cameroon. Okay, my question uh, generally boils to the prioritization of mental health when it concerns um, health insurance. I want to know what is concretely done in trying to uh, put mental health in the forefront, especially in, in healthcare systems in Africa. I'm in still not day. hearing Didier. I don't know. Eric, are you able to mute Didier, please? Hello. We hear Didier normally. Okay. Brilliant. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Yes, people can hear him. Okay. 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 Thank you. So my, my, my question is, how do we integrate the WHO framework to uh, 2019, 2023 into the health insurance scheme. We, we know that we know that as we speak, mental health is a real issue and uh, we cannot talk about health insurance without talking about mental health. So what is concretely done in trying to integrate mental health in all of these health insurance schemes? Thank you. Bien, merci Didier. Alors, on va laisser répondre Pascal et Joe. Je vous demanderai, Pascal, Joe, d'être assez concis dans vos réponses pour qu'on puisse we'll laisser la parole à plus de Pascal participants, s'il vous plaît. Il nous reste un peu moins de 30 minutes. Merci beaucoup. Be as brief as Pascal, Pascal. D'accord. Euh, bien difficile exercice d'être concis. <rire> Mais bon, euh, okay. la question qui me posait, c'est est-ce qu'il faut continuer à, the question à, à impliquer the population, the citizens, in the montage. If we should include citizens in Alors, the, une, the, the uh, developing of health insurance schemes. It's a difficult question. Et, 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 effectivement, tout dépend. Everything depends on the perspectives. First, there are technical aspects of insurance. We don't have a dynamic dynamique des études de faisabilité comme on faisait yeah, avant avec, euh, about avec euh, certaines no questions bien précises Donc, euh, on peut se baser sur des statistiques si c'est statistiques confiables. Statistics, um, statistics are mais il est reliable. toujours difficile de décréter. C'est-à-dire, on, to... euh, on peut dire, voilà, ça se passe comme ça, voici les paramètres et il faut appliquer. To say et, this is euh, what the situation is and this is what the choices Alors, là are. C'est dangereux parce que dangerous. si euh, l'offre de soins, si le prestataire n'est pas prêt à vendre des services de qualité, service provider is not able to provide de, de, Healthcare, uh, quality care. Ah, it's part, it's, it's going to create a social problem because it will force people to, to buy something that doesn't exist for quality. So we always need one way or another to involve the population. But how and how and at which stage the montage the, the mechanism d'assurance question in particularly in terms of the developing of the, mutual the, insurance the, schemes. 
Donc, je pense que c'est ce que je peux donner. That's what merci, I Pascal. Pascal. Je si si toujours un petit peu court, je peux m'arrêter là. Parfait. Merci, Joe, s'il te plaît. Thank you. Pour la seconde question. Thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, two parts to this, because I, I, I can't speak too much to the, to the specifics of it, other than, of course, you're right, these are things that, you know, we don't have, we're not talking about the overall health issues unless mental health is part of it. I think the critical issue though, in terms of what we're talking about, and, and this is not just in relation to mental health, is um, first and foremost, service delivery. So before we consider whether a certain type of service should be included in terms of what's gonna be prepaid in a system, we have to make sure that the delivery capacity is there. And so there's a whole range of things. And I would imagine that countries are at very different levels of development in terms of, uh, of the delivery system to ensure different types of mental health services, whether basic or more severe. So I think that's the one thing, and that is not just about mental health. In fact, this is a, a bigger question um, that we are focusing a lot on, uh, given the focus of this uh, webinar, on financing, but many of the issues I believe are actually service delivery issues and not strictly financing. The other, the other point on this, I think, would be to say, what should the, again, the public policy response be? So we have in a case, not about putting this in one insurance scheme that might serve 5% of the population or another one that might serve 10, but rather how to, you know, is it possible to have some regulatory function around this. So whether there are many schemes or just one or two, or it's just fun, everything from the budget that we can standardize certain basic services in the way that that might be also similarly the case for, um, for things like TB treatment, for example, that your, your access to that treatment should certainly not depend on whether you've made a contribution, right? So. These are things that each country has to do, but I don't, I can't see that we could have in, in any practical sense a kind of one size fits all approach to this, other than ensuring that in the policy dialogue about what is to be, you know, what is to be considered for inclusion or exclusion, that the mental health concerns are fully represented there. Thanks. Thank you very much to Joe and to Pascal for answering those questions. I'm now going to hand back to Daniela, who will ask. Uh, one more question in French. Thank you. Merci. Uh, oui, je vais partager mon écran. Pour la deuxième question uh, en français. Uh, alors, on a maintenant une question de Madame Hélène Barreuil de l'OMS à Genève. Uh, Est-ce qu'on peut um, la, la mettre en mute pour, uh, pour qu'elle puisse uh, répondre? Enfin, poser sa question de nouveau et peut-être approfondir un petit peu. Bonjour à tous, vous m'entendez bien Hello everyone, do you hear me Yes. Ok, excellent. Euh, ma question était plutôt dirigée Eric, à est qu est, euh, vers Pascal. Est-ce que son micro est activé is directed mostly to Pascal. Ben, J'entends l'interprétation en fait, mais est-ce que ah. vous entendez moi directement oui, oui, on vous entend, euh, Hélène. Ah. Vous pouvez parler. Excellent. Donc, Hélène, ma question était plutôt... Madame Hélène Barreuil Ma question était plutôt dirigée question vers Pascal, mais je suis ravie si vous pouvez répondre également. En fait, Pascal avait well, mentionné dans, dans sa présentation le fait que euh, les paquets de soins étaient souvent. Euh, pas clairement euh, défini dans plusieurs pays d'Afrique francophone. Euh, uh, par exemple, en tout cas, sur plusieurs pays que je connais, euh, j'avais le sentiment que les paquets de soins étaient euh, assez clairement définis. On a des paquets de soins qui sont définis uh, dans les soins de santé secondaire, pour les soins de santé secondaire. Donc, pour moi, il ne m'apparaissait pas que c'était vraiment un problème fondamental. Plutôt, le problème fondamental était de savoir comment financer ces 
finance Donc, this comment, practice? À mon sens, il y a deux aspects. Le premier aspect, c'est combien, effectivement, combien dans le budget de l'État on peut yeah. disponibiliser pour financer ces budget can we make Le deuxième aspect, c'est de savoir comment cet argent est déboursé vers les formations. How is the money non, dans sa présentation, on mentionne effectivement the, uh, des donations par un franc. C'est parfois dans certains pays fondamental pour combler le manque euh, en médicaments, mais je crois que ça instaure aussi un certain nombre de rigidités dans, dans la manière dont l'argent peut être déboursé et ensuite géré par les formations. Uh, euh, il y a des, des dotations euh, qui viennent avec une plus grande souplesse au niveau des formations euh, de soins de santé primaire. Ça pourra the, permettre peut-être de combler les besoins en médicaments, mais aussi de répondre providers. à un certain euh, uh, nombre d'autres ajustements et d'autres besoins uh, financiers ou humains euh, auxquels vont faire face les, les formations sanitaires. Donc voilà ma, ma remarque et question, c'est plus de dire peut-être que euh, le problème central n'est pas celui de la définition du paquet de soins, parce qu'il m'apparaît quand même bien défini dans les contextes en tant que soins, sur la question du, du combien et du But comment les financer avec les ressources publiques. Merci Hélène. Avant de laisser la parole à... à... Pascal ou Bruno, je propose que Daniela adresse une autre question, s'il vous plaît. D'accord, oui. Euh, je vais passer à une autre question alors. Si on en a en réserve. Oui, oui. <rire> euh, il y avait une question ici, euh, est-ce que vous voyez, de Madame Valérie Ride. Euh, directrice de recherche au Sénégal. Ah oui, pardon, pardon, monsieur, directeur de recherche au Sénégal. Est-ce qu'on peut lui donner la parole, Eric Vous pouvez parler, monsieur Reed Oui, bonjour tout le monde. Euh, merci pour la, la discussion. Euh, je crois par contre, contre pouvez-vous bien faire attention que votre micro soit situé sur le, 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 le speaker français okay. En bas à droite. Ok, in French, like this. Vous m'entendez okay. Oui. Donc je parle en français. I will speak in French. There are two important elements. La discussion, le, le premier, c'est les innovations qu'on commence à voir dans plusieurs pays, notamment en Afrique de l'Ouest, qui sont en train de dissoudre les euh, mutuelles communautaires villageoises ou communales pour les transformer en mutuelles à une échelle de larger levels, district or uh, departmental levels, and to therefore to have a larger scale, and at the same time to professionalize the management of these schemes. The results in Senegal notably are interesting, and in Mali, which has been putting this in place for three years, But it's more difficult and because the, the, the levels of coverage are, are much smaller, 8%, whereas in Senegal, 60%. But this is a tendency and a movement which uh, should be noted. The second point I'd like to make is that many contexts we see important subsidies. We're talking of billions of CFA francs to subsidize the joining of mutual insurance schemes. And, and so we can ask uh, who actually benefits from these subsidies? Is it really the end user or is it the, the system itself that uh, benefits from these subsidies? And this is uh, uh, another aspect that's important to consider. So, These are, are, are my thoughts about uh, the innovations that we need to bring, professionalization, 
and uh, the participation of civil society and communities in the process and the risk that uh, communities will be put aside as uh, these uh, uh, mutual schemes move to uh, larger levels. Thank you. I give the floor to Bruno or Pascal. Bruno, shall I go? So I will, I will go. No, no, I'm Bruno not really here. Not here. <laughs> je pense que je pense que vous allez vous compléter dans tous les cas. I think you'll, uh, you'll Alors, both, uh, la première make question de Hélène et puis la question the first de question of Hélène. Pascal, à Hélène. Ah, d'accord, ok. Uh, Hélène. Pour revenir sur la question de Hélène, moi je fais la distinction entre uh, voilà, qu'est-ce qui est fait I make a distinction et qu'est-ce qui est fait. What is Effectivement, done dans la what plupart des pays, on a, uh, ils ont fait un costume. En tout cas, uh, que ça soit basique, que ça soit élaboré, euh, adopté, one, validé uh, ou non, one, il y a eu des pas vers un costing, ça c'est clair. Mais alors pourquoi on n'avance pas Si le costing est fait, si If on est sûr que euh, on maîtrise ça sure et que de l'autre côté le prestataire il est prêt à accueillir un modèle essentiel, qu'est-ce qu'on attend alors Où est le problème uh, on peut effectivement for? jouer sur uh, la notion de délégation de gestion. Parce que, comme j'ai dit au début, uh, il faut absolument qu'on arrive à un, un certain niveau de We partage des fonctions. Ça, je crois qu'on ne peut pas uh, 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 occuper. Uh, alors, functions dans l'existence, on peut tester. On peut dire, OK, le paquet est défini. Est-ce que vous êtes prêt à vendre yes. ce paquet. The package exists, hein, are you ready to sell this uh, mettre, package, so permettre à la so population d'accéder à When ce paquet. When I say sell, so, I mean allow population to have access to the package. The deficit in mutual schemes is they have to arrive, they have to manage to, to be able to do this. The challenge today is if the healthcare package is defined, who sells it, who carries the risk, and is the care provider ready and able? That's the fundamental question. Now we have existing models, they're worth what they're worth. That universal healthcare is uh, momentum and important momentum to move healthcare systems in the right direction. There is a scheme or a, a model that exists. Is it performing or not? In, in, and it takes time to put these uh, schemes to, uh, into place. And, and they need uh, for provisions for five years and, and to be able to predict for five years and to uh, ensure the, the financing. State needs to internalize the delegation of management based on a reorganized mutual approach, but it's a step that's being taken. When the state externalizes the management, such as results-based uh, systems, uh, the development of the system is, is slower. There's more freedom in terms of how, but the development is, is slower when there's a hybrid delegation as in Chad, where the state says I'm in and I'm not in, the state gives resources to subsidize the cost of management. 
we who, who, who know the Chad know at one point it was a good model at one point because there was a contribution from the state the state pulled out of the scheme the contribution of the state was not institutionalized and the state pulled out of the scheme and all the advances in terms of uh, development uh, fell down, uh, fell apart. So there are healthcare packages, but we're not ready until the costs of the packages are stabilized, provided, and the care provider is ready to, to offer it because his economic model doesn't allow it. problem the disponibility des entrants. Merci Pascal. Comme tu m'as tendu la perche, j'espère que la, 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 la réponse satisfait la question de, de Madame Barrois. On, on laisse la parole à Bruno qui est aussi interpellé et a bien travaillé Bruno, sur ces questions, notamment au Tchad. Alors la, la question était aussi de Valérie Ride à répondre. Merci Bruno. À toi. Oui, moi je vais plus répondre sur la intervention de Valérie. Uh, uh, L'origine du fractionnement. The origin of the fractioning is history. There was a need that was not taken care of by the state and each uh, entity tried in his own way with his own resources to provide a response. And then now we reached a point where the states are beginning to pay attention. And this is a good thing. Is the, uh, the Senegalese experiment is an interesting option that can be interesting for several countries. Why? I come back to the question of participation. When I say Senegal, harmonize, unify, and professionalize. I'm convinced that once the system are in de place, their de control, durability and efficiency will depend on the way they are controlled. Le deuxième point, c'est que il n'y a pas d'assurance maladie possible sans confiance. No Pour ces deux raisons, trust. le fait qu'il y ait un lien entre un assuré dans, le, dans les contextes qu'on connaît, le fait qu'il y ait un lien entre quelqu'un qui contribue et quelqu'un qui reçoit un service, c'est quelque chose à préserver. C'est pour ça que la ligne, on a combiné deux tendances. On doit fusionner pour la gestion du risque et pour l'efficience. Bring together in order to manage on doit professionnaliser également pour la gestion du risque et pour professionnaliser. Et en même temps, on ne doit pas perdre time, ce lien, à mon avis encore, avec les assurés. Et tout ça, sure que ce soit en termes d'information, de, 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 de crédibilité dans celui à qui on donne l'argent, enfin, il y a pas mal de choses pour que l'assurance soit acceptée. So et cette rencontre-là, entre ce mouvement d'unification et cette professionnalisation et le lien avec la, les assurés, elle se fait au niveau de la gouvernance. C'est pour ça que j'ai parlé d'une gouvernance mixte. Euh, selon les, les, les sensibilités politiques, un État déléguera complètement la, la gestion de, de l'assurance à, à des fédérations de gouvernance, car dans le cas, elle ne peut pas être dans des structures hybrides, comme en Mauritanie, où il y a des structures such as in, uh, in Mauritania. The, the key is, is that it's the combination of a fusion, professionalization, and a strong relationship to the insurees to guarantee uh, quality control and uh, maintaining trust in the system. Thank you. Quatre. Est-ce qu'on peut prendre une dernière question en anglais ou en français, une question brûlante, s'il y en a Ou bien on va conclure 
Is there time for another question quickly? I think yeah. due to time, everybody, I'd just like to thank everybody who's raised questions, but I think due to time, we need to cut short. And perhaps we will hold the questions that you have raised and we will get back to you in a separate communication using the expert panel. So my suggestion now would be to actually hand back to Damien, who is going to wrap up this very informative session and to let us know what the key lessons have learned have been. Thank you very much. Over to you, Damien. Well, merci Ingrid, merci Daniela. Thank you, Ingrid. Thank you, Daniela. Thank you again to the participants. Je pense qu'on va on va retenir de ces questions, réactions aussi qu'il y a des, well, des intérêts. Et je pense que même les panélistes point. pourront peut-être être frustrés de ne pas pouvoir poursuivre le débat. But, uh, je vois Joe qui tient son menton, qui voudrait peut-être ajouter un mot. On va leur laisser to... la parole, chacun peut-être 30 to, uh, secondes pour uh, pouvoir uh, add dire un mot. Elements will perhaps leave uh, 30 seconds to each one to say a word. Voilà, avant que, que moi je, je, laisse, je leur laisse la parole et peut-être à la fin, après les panélistes, Eric pourra nous accompagner à la sortie. Je voudrais rappeler, je ne vais pas faire le résumé des discussions qui sont très riches et qui sont très ce serait très difficile, donc on laisse la parole aux panélistes pour le dernier mot. Mais vous dire que nous voulons bien poursuivre ce travail. C'était un premier jet, une première session. On a voulu concentrer sur l'identification des problèmes. Alors, euh, M. Valérie Roux a dit pourquoi pas traiter plutôt de présenter des innovations alors au lieu de traiter des problèmes et des solutions. Probablement que dans les solutions, il y a des innovations à mettre en avant. Alors, on serait heureux de pour ceux qui sont intéressés. Je vais vous laisser mon adresse email. Si elle n'apparaît pas sur les documents, je la mets à l'écran maintenant. N'hésitez pas à me recontacter pour la suite. Nous allons essayer de construire quelque chose à travers des ateliers jusqu'au mois de mai 2022 pour le prochain événement. Merci au Geneva Forum, merci aux collègues. Merci aux panélistes et aux participants encore une fois. Voilà, la parole est dans l'ordre. Peut-être qu'on va garder l'ordre de parole de d'abord Joe, ensuite Pascal et puis Bruno, avant de laisser Eric conclure. Merci. Merci, Damien. And this is Joe. I, I, thanks to, to you and everybody. Uh, well, thanks to you for organizing this and all of the. Uh, good and challenging questions raised by, by everyone. I think just in summary, I guess my main messages are two. One is in terms of financing, that we still have some distance to go in terms of breaking out of our old ways of thinking about how financing. And we need to kind of unpack systems on a functional basis rather than um, you know, negotiating whether something is or isn't health insurance, right? Um, because these are all functions that have to be provided. And, you know, in terms of funds having to be pooled, services purchased, utilization monitored, and so forth. So that's really important. And it's, it's essential, actually, if we're going to link up different types of schemes or, or, or different sources of funds is to do that. Um, the last part I would say, which was also something that a few people spoke to, but we, we need to give more attention, is that the challenge of reaching people uh, in the informal sector is often framed in terms of just health financing. And I believe that we need a lot more work, a lot more research, um, a lot more experience to talk about service delivery, reaching people with, with services who can't, get, who can't get to them, how to deal with issue, you know, very different types of populations. Service delivery does in fact need to be tailored to the very local needs, whereas financing, you wanna kind of keep broad, as, as broad as you can. So we need to kind of suggest that answering the question of reducing the barriers to effective coverage, you know, and effective service use really is as much a service delivery issue as it is a financing issue. And I'm hoping we can devote more attention to that in the future, thanks.
On t'entend pas, Damien. I don't hear Damien. He's talking, but his mic is not on. Bruno, il nous reste 30 secondes chacun. 30 secondes chacun, Pascal, Bruno, rapidement, s'il vous plaît. Pascal. <rire> un message, Pascal. comme Joe. Merci, oui, Joe, un message euh, très bien, clair, très clair. Pour ma part, Jeffrey, un message, c'est juste euh, euh, me. de dire qu'il y a énormément de choses qui se passent encore dans l'existant. Et euh, faisons attention de bien apprendre les leçons avant de passer à d'autres euh, modèles ou d'autres formes. Parce qu'on n'est pas sûr que ce qui est proposé actuellement comme alternative peut résoudre ce qui est connu par l'existant. Offered today as alternatives will merci. actually resolve the issues uh, that we find uh, in the existing practice. Merci, Pascal. Félicitations pour les 30 secondes. C'est tenu. Thank you for the 30 <laughs> Bruno. seconds. Oui. Bruno. Tu m'entends? Oui, Bruno. On t'entend très bien. Merci. À toi. Bon, bah, je reviendrai un petit peu sur une, une idée forte. Just come back with oui, il y a des choses qui ont été faites. Main idea. Yes, some euh, things have been done. Les, les bébés ont vécu. Et on a pas mal de choses à apprendre de leur histoire. Je recommanderais que beaucoup d'autopsies soient faites. Ça rejoint ce que disait Jo, c'est-à-dire des analyses de, basées sur du factuel. Euh, parce que le risque, c'est qu'un jour, on dise que l'assurance maladie a vocation universelle, euh, suive le même sort ou ce qu'on suivait des nuits à l'éducation. Eric, à toi, merci. Oui, je, je, I would like to thank uh, all of you. It was a difficult challenge to uh, do all this uh, webinar because uh, we have a lot of people who attend. And, uh, uh, but I think it was managed well. And at the end, a lot of questions was addressed. And as you say, you have uh, your name. We will contact all the people to propose a following activity. So I think that we can stop here. Thanks all of you for this very interesting debate.